Welcome to this tutorial on digital circuit construction using the CircuitLogic simulation software package from Logic Design. Many of the aspects relating to circuit construction have been covered in the first two tutorials of this series. In tutorial one we covered the component library, component selection, as well as the component placement grid. In the second CircuitLogic tutorial we covered circuit wiring, modifying component values, and many aspects of circuit annotation. At this point, you may want to review the first tutorials in this series before proceeding. Here in tutorial 5, we'll be covering digital gates and ICs, bus wiring, as well as some additional circuit annotation features that are particularly useful when working with digital components. We'll be creating a circuit that uses transparent latches to selectively pick data off of a data bus. We're going to begin by taking a look at the different formats in which digital components can appear in circuit logics. In general, digital parts can appear as individual gates, complete ICs, or as functional subsections of an IC. The device library contains an extensive selection of digital components for use in digital circuit construction. Here we have selected and placed all the components required for our digital circuit. The digital switches, logic gates, indicators, and hex displays can all be found in the main toolbar. The transparent latch ICs are located in the device library. They are organized by device types or by IC numbers. We'll now go ahead and illustrate how buses can be placed in circuit logics. We start by clicking on the wire tool. Next, we move the cursor to the location that we want to start the bus. Hold the shift key down and click once to begin placement. We drag the mouse cursor to the location at which we want to terminate the bus and double click to end the bus routing. At that time, the Edit Bus Wire dialog box appears, allowing the user to specify a unique identifier for this bus. We enter a bus reference number within the specified range and then click OK to complete the placement of the bus. With the first segment of the control bus laid, we move on to place the second and third segments. We move the cursor to the starting point location of the next segment of the control bus. Hold Shift and click once to start placing the bus. Double click to terminate the bus segment. When the dialog box appears, we enter the same bus reference number as we did for the first segment and click on the OK button to complete placing the second segment of the control bus. We repeat the procedure to place the third and last segment of the control bus. Because all three segments share the same bus reference number, electrically this appears as a single continuous bus line. We're now ready to move on and place the data bus. When the dialog box opens for the data bus, we enter a unique identifier ensuring that this bus segment is not electrically connected to the others. With our control and data bus segments completed, we move on to illustrate how components can be wired to the respective buses. We select the component pin we wish to wire and drag a wire to the bus. We click to make the bus connection. We enter a unique wire reference value for each wire on the bus. We select the next pin and repeat the process, entering a different reference value for the bus wire. Each time we create a unique wire reference, we're essentially adding a wire to the bus. It's important to note that each unique wire reference we apply relates only to the bus that we are working with. In this manner, we have essentially defined a four-wire data bus. We now move on and repeat the process to connect the least significant bits of the second latch to the data bus. We use the same wire reference for the D0 connection on latch 2. Any pin on latch 2 that shares the same wire reference as a latch 1 pin is essentially connected to the same bus wire. We continue on to connect each of the remaining latch pins to the data bus. 
As you can see, working with buses in the CircuitLogic simulation package can be quick and easy. We can now continue on and complete the wiring of the digital circuit. At this point, we've completed the wiring of the circuit, we've added labels to the buses, we have also turned off the drawing grid. The last thing we're going to look at in this tutorial are some circuit annotation features that haven't been previously covered. We select the view menu and click on the circuit display data item from the menu. This dialog box allows the user to show or hide many of the annotation items associated with components in the circuit. With default as the selected setting, the annotation settings for each component dialog box determines whether an annotation feature is shown or hidden. The annotation settings for the data latch components are showing the pin names and hiding the pin numbers. This can be overridden here in this dialog box. This is easily accomplished by selecting Hide for pin names and Show for pin numbers. It's important to note that this is a global setting. It overrides the settings on all components, and now all components are hiding pin names and showing pin numbers. For our purposes, we're going to hide both pin names and pin numbers. This concludes our tutorial on digital circuit construction. In our next tutorial in the series, we'll take a look at digital simulation. For more information on circuit logics or any of the simulation packages offered from Logic Design, please contact us at our phone number, email, or website address shown here.